We've got the lockers. These are three different load rated lockers for the Strebog SP9A3. A lot of people wondering, uh, there's been reports both positive and negative about reliability with this gun with the included locker. I theorize that that might be what was calibrated for the military trials. Remember military ammo is a bit hotter than most of your plinking stuff. We've shot 27 different loads through ours, uh, 17 or so that we showed you on film. Uh, another video, another testing we did has just remained in our notes. And we've got nine loads that are common enough that didn't run so well with this. So we're gonna swap in the softer locker, see how that runs, and a few other tips and tricks, Grand Power and Strebog related, coming up next on GB Guns. get into this I wanted to address some questions and some comments I'd seen out there one being why does GB guns care about grand power so much are they another one of those paid channels well the short answer is no we're not a paid channel and why do I care about grand power well I've been shooting them for a while as you'll see down the table here we brought out some of our grand powers Streebog is going to the revised a1 the original a1 and an assortment of pistols that I've been shooting for five years and a fan of ever since. Love them so much that another one not on the table is my personal carry gun, this K100. So if you're wondering how it is that we don't have some of the same struggles that a lot of other YouTube channels seem to have or people complain about, maybe it's because I use these things a whole lot more. I'm not just doing them for a quick but single video have a slightly deeper understanding of the gun. Now, the fact that not everyone has that same knowledge could be my fault. Maybe I need to do a better job and talk about these fine guns more often, but there's too many other things out there to cover to spend all of our time on ground power. If you want to see about any of these, we've got videos, we've got articles, we've got print articles on them. Now let's get to that SP9A3 and trying that other locker. People have asked what is changing the lockers going to be like. So we've got Miss Tia here, who is field stripping a street bog for the third time in her life. We've got three street bogs, I think that's fair. She's popped the rear pin, pivoted the lower away. Now taken off the brace adapter, pulls the bolt out, the pin falls, you pull out the locker, put in the new locker recommend adding a little bit of grease, which we will of course do before shooting. This is just for demonstration purposes. Pins back in. Bolts back in, buffers back in. Putting that end cap on can be tough depending on which adapter you've got. The pins back in and now we've got a functional, ready to go, soft locker setup, SP9A3. So before we get into testing this, I wanted to start off with the known bad guys. Showing you the locker here so you know that that soft locker is not in the Streebog. We're uh, still gonna run it with the locker as equipped. Now out of 27 loads, these guys didn't seem to want to perform. The Winchester M1152, Hornady American Gunner, Hornady Critical Defense, Fiocchi 115 grain only when it used with an old magazine, Heavy Shot 100 grain frangible, Normal 108, also only in old magazines that we have issues, and Winchester Super Clean 90 grain only in old mags, and the SIG V Crown 124 grain. So we're going to run these through real quick on camera to show you them not working. I know that's kind of boring, but we want to prove there's a difference. We're going to show each load with the old as comes equipped locker and then we will run the new locker. Since Tia just endured doing those three malfunction videos, she's behind the camera while I deal with the malfunctions on this, assuming that these rounds aren't gonna run. Doing three rounds, as always, because we are testing the mechanical function of the firearm. Does it pick up the first round from slide lock or bolt lock in this case? generate enough energy to cycle it and chamber another round of the same type? Does it generate enough energy to lock open when with an empty magazine? It could be done with two rounds. We do with three in case there's a fluke. Anything beyond that is testing the magazine. As far as magazine issues, 
there's a whole another video that I think needs to go into these mags. So starting with our Winchester M1152, three rounds. What do you know? Of course, today it runs. Well, we'll still run that in the soft locker, see what happens there. Hornady's American Gunner, 115 grain. This has a very pointed, uh, more triangular shape or pyramid, if you will, shape to it, which I think led to some of its problems. It's also a soft shooter. And there we've got a malfunction. To show you what kind, lock the bolt open. And that was the second round getting shoved in while trying to feed. Um, so the third round's still in the magazine here, but that's still malfunctioning, which is what we expected. Hornady Critical Defense, 115 grain. Very, very similar bullet profile to the American Gunner that we just saw fail. Same thing, the second round got smashed. Not enough juice. Fioki 115 grain ball. Remember, this is a load that uh, ran in the new mags, but not in the old mags with the A3. Today it's behaving. Heavy shot, heavy duty. This is a 100 grain frangible load. For those of you in states requiring it or shooting at range is requiring it, should malfunction. Today, of course, it behaves. Norma's MHP 108 grain. This and our A3 only fails in the old mags. Just like that. And you can see we've got round number two has popped sideways with round number three still in the magazine. Winchester is super clean, 90 grain. So lightweight, I didn't think there was anything in this magazine. Looks like our next round got pinched. Third round is still in the mag. And our SIG V Crown, this is the 124 grain, had failures before. And again, once again, third round's in there, second round was flopped in. My theory on this is that with these softer recoiling loads, there's not enough time. The bolt is traveling enough to eject the round and try to feed the next, but not enough time for the magazine to keep up or it's hitting. Somehow the timing is off. This is part of why we rapid fire when we test these to put the magazine to its max test that we can realistically do on semi-auto. Now we're gonna put in that soft load locker and T is gonna shoot with her softer shoulder, see if we get similar results or if it's better. So we've gone ahead and installed the soft locker. It's not room for two. There's only one in there, so let's get uh, let's get started. The first, running in the same order as Graham did, I'm gonna use the Winchester Active Duty first. And just fine. Are you muting me between rounds? <laughs> Sorry. And next is the American Gunner. This is that triangular shaped bullet. Got smashed pretty good there. Similar to what they have in the other tests that we've done. And next up is the Critical Defense by Hornady. seem to run just fine. Moving on to the Fiocchi. That ran fine also. And next is the Heavy Shot Heavy Duty. got two of those out. Well, that was going to be uh, tactical there. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll 
try the Norma MHP. Only two of those. Got mangled in the feed ramp there. Not necessarily mangled, but it was obviously stopped on its way in. Next, we'll try the Winchester Super Clean. Those ran just fine. Six Hour Elite Performance. 124 grain. 124 grain. Not sure what happened but it didn't work so of the eight loads that we brought out the ninth one unfortunately we didn't have enough um, to continue testing with this is being filmed in september of 2020 four of them now work with the new locker four of them did not with tia shooting just to reduce variables i'm going to shoot the same lo four loads that did not work for tia and using only the new magazines since that's what comes with the gun so that starts with this Winchester Active Duty M1152, which is a really snubby load, and even though they say it's active duty, it does not feel hot like a military load. All three ran. Hornady American Gunner, remember a short little pyramid shaped bullet, 115 grain. The critical defense ran, why didn't the American Gunner? All three ran. Norma's MHP 108 grain. All three ran. We've got one more load to test here and we might have our answer. Three out of four is 75%. Let's see if we can go for 100%. And the three out of four is technically seven of the eight that didn't work before. Here's our SIG Elite Performance 124 grain. Nope. Looks like we still have a choke there. And it hit the case in the same spot that we've seen all of them getting hit in the case. Uh, which tells us that round's just a little too soft. It would be really interesting to see a test like this done through a chrono to see what the velocity is, even though this gun is cranking up plenty of velocity. Remember, it's not a direct blowback. There is some factor in there, thanks to that roller lock delay. It's a not technically a roller lock, but there is a piece rolling and it is a locker. So I'm gonna call it roller lock. So does this solve your problems? Well, for seven of the eight loads we had here that did not work as you saw with the regular locker, they did work with the soft locker piece. The difference between Tia and I is shooting form and mass. It could be that I'm holding firmer than she is and that's why it runs for me and not for her. So, is this something to complain about? Well, yeah, maybe, but I think there's a little more to it. Right, we're back at the bench because I wanted to show you stuff in a little bit closer detail than you could see while we're at the range. Here are our three lockers. And you notice they're marked 3540, and this one, which is the soft load, is very softly marked with 45 degree. That's because the angles on these are slightly different. And I know there have been a lot of comments out there, people asking, well, why didn't they just make it run on everything? And that's not really the way Grand Power works. As you saw in uh, our opening, Pistols has been their main thing for a long, long time. And they're very popular and very successful in the European competitive market, uh, competition shooters that is, because of this rotating barrel design that makes for a very smooth shooting gun. I'll roll in some footage of the Excalibur being shot so you get an idea what I'm talking about. Now for that to work, and yes this does relate to the Strebog, so hold on, they had to machine these cam surfaces onto the barrels. Now these two stainless ones are older. They moved off of that because the stainless does rust after a while and lots of abuse. 
as has happened on my Excalibur barrel. Beautiful giant bull barrel with those flutes there. Um, and now have this nitride finish which is a bit more durable. But I'm showing you these because these three barrels have different overall length and different weight. So for them to run the same every time, that cam surface needs to be calculated for that. And they did that. And the Streebog pistols come with springs, or the Grand Power pistols come with springs to tune them to the load you're going to be shooting. As you'll see in the uh, footage of me running the X-Cal, I'm shooting some very soft 115 grain. And that 115 grain, sorry about my voice, the uh, fires out here have it really smoky. And being outside for as long as we were to film this, face was burning and my throat is all jacked up. But um, the soft 115 grain was barely ejecting out of this thing because for the spring that I've got and for this action, it's a little bit soft. Not an issue if I run some warmer, higher quality 115 grain or some 124 grain loads. And the same goes with these pistols and you've seen them in our What's For Dinner tests. Uh, we run through and show you how they work. But what I'm getting at here is one of the things that makes Grand Powers different is they are very precisely engineered and machined to a specific tolerance for optimal performance. That's why you have these options for the Streebog and part of what makes the Streebog a little bit different from just your run of the mill plinking gun. The company, its intent, this is all my personal opinion by the way, uh, and its products have never been run of the mill guns. Always a step above, always a step to the extreme on the engineering and precision. So, you can't really expect the Streebog to be like your $400 plinking PCC. It's simply not going to be. And that was never an issue before in the past because generally the only people running these things were your more professional shooters. Either folks who were going to spend a lot of time with a gun, very experienced shooters, and your competitive shooters in the European and uh, Canadian market. The Streebog made Grand Power popular here in the States, but I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's not your average gun, and so you can't expect the average gun performance. That works both ways, by the way. You can expect insane accuracy and precise fit on parts. Uh, that's generally the way things have gone. The Streebog is the first time stuff has been massively produced uh, for the market here in the States. And it's, well, I guess the best parallel would be if you bought yourself a nice Porsche RS3, would you complain that it doesn't run well on 85 octane? Probably not. It's not meant for that. It's not going to perform well on that. You got to feed it good stuff. You got to have your tire pressure right. Got to keep your, t your suspension tuned right for the road you're going to be driving. And when you do that, you've got an awesome performer. And that's kind of what Grand Power has been all about for more than a decade. It's been quite a while. So I'm not making excuses for the Streebog, but I am saying that uh, tuning to load is an ability, not a detraction, just like it is with their handguns. This is nothing new. If that was somehow not made clear in the what do I have, three dozen videos now on ground powers over the last five years, then sorry that's my fault. If uh, you weren't aware of that, well that's because not enough people are putting the, the word out about it. But the hot load and extra hot load, in my opinion, are likely not necessary for the US market. These would be plus P, plus P plus, I assume, or running a very high pressure load with a suppressor on there. We did note in our initial testing, uh, not what you saw in the video, but before that, that some loads that did not run unsuppressed ran fine suppressed. That's why some of your pay-for-play um, shows out there are uh, always running a suppressor on their gun in the YouTube videos because, well, for anything blowback operated, it aids in reliability. It does make it dirtier, though. If you get a chance to pick up the soft load, I hope these are imported. It will work for those super soft loads, but let's keep in mind, in our testing anyways, out of 27 loads, only 9 needed this. 
this did fix it for eight of those nine. But once again, this is like detuning your performance car so that you can run on cheaper gas. Anyways, those are my thoughts on these lockers and letting you understand hopefully a little better grand power. It is far more complex of a weapons system with their handguns, PCCs, and rifles than I think a lot of people are willing to accept because they're used to just running something normal. As far as ammo sensitivity in this, I mean, that's the same reason why we run What's For Dinner in all of our guns and why we also give you comment on recoil and how things feel in all the guns that we do. Um, it's nothing new and nothing unique to this gun to have a gun be sensitive to ammo types. Hope this helped. Thanks for watching.